I want to talk today、um, about my introduction to Mr. Rogers, Mr. Fred Rogers. Not my formal introduction to him, but to his work. And I want to tell you why it's important to me. But before I tell you, I have to go a little bit back in time. Last May,、um, one of the parents, one of you, asked me what I'm excited about for the upcoming year. In other words, what is my vision for this year? Since the last school year had not yet quite wound down, I was still mostly thinking about the year I was in. And that was the year that Greeny came to town to preschool. Greeny is the aeroponic tower garden you'll learn more about soon. I was thinking about growing things indoors and how this growing tower was so exciting, it had even become my screensaver. So at this point, you may be wondering if Mora has a life. I do, I think, but I was in love with the thought of using technology in meaningful ways. Thinking about children learning, about growing and caring for life, and it was a gorgeous thing to behold watching plants grow all winter long. Larry had truly encouraged me to do this precisely for that reason. And seeing the children eat the fruits of their labor, and so on and so on. So, anyway, I kept thinking about this question what is my vision? And then other questions bubbled up. What other ways can technology be used in meaningful ways? I imagine there are many people in this room that could help me with that question, and I look forward to those conversations. I also thought about my role as a white woman and an educator, and how social equity, social justice, and equity can be taught to our littlest people, our three and four year olds. I wanted to make sure that anything I envisioned doing would be firmly rooted and aligned with, in capitals, play, with experiential learning and developmentally sound practices. So, this led me to some research. The National Association for the Education of Young Children, or the NAEYC, has developed really sound research position papers that shed light on these questions and they guide in this regard. Publications such as Anti Bias Education for Young Children and Ourselves by Louise Derman Sparks and Julie Olson Edwards. Technology and Digital Media in the Early Years, an anthology edited by Chip Donahue, to name just a couple. So I did get some clues, but to answer this question deeply, I had to connect with what I care most about as an educator. And I have to go then to the people that inspire me most. I want to tell you about one such person. In 2007, I met a great educator, a writer, a storyteller, and healer by the name of Reverend Paula Lawrence Waymiller. Reverend Paula was actually here today, thanks to Larry involving her in very important work we're doing in the school in conjunction with, in a sense, one of our teachers today said in greeting her, You are our spiritual advisor to BFS. My conversation with her began those many years ago, back in 07, when I met her at dinner. And again, that very same teacher was with me at that dinner. And I sought guidance about how to teach nonviolence. This was an especially poignant question for me, as I had been speaking to her about growing up in the Middle East, in a war torn country. Neither of us had any definitive answers to that question that night. But years later, I saw Reverend Paul again at a conference. Now, a lot of time had gone by and I had not been in touch with her. I wasn't even sure she'd remember who I was, but nonetheless, I went to thank her for what was a very moving keynote speech that she had made that night. Of course I remember you, she said, and I've been thinking about your question. This was years later, as if we had never lost a moment in the conversation. And you know, The answer is we cannot teach anti violence. We can only teach peace. That revelation was a key for me that opened many doors. I thought about all the things we frame in the anti, anti racism, anti bias, and on and on. And that is a starting point of sorts. But to envision things as we want them, that takes seeing. Knowing, understanding needs of children, and it begs us to dare and to imagine greatly. Reverend Paula continues to inspire me profoundly in ways that sometimes come in the form of a surprise. 
I came upon a chapter she had written about Mr. Rogers. You thought I'd never get there. Now, Mr. Rogers, for me, was a bit of an enigma. I knew he was an American early childhood icon, but I perceived him definitely erroneously as lacking a little bit of edge. Maybe it was the New Yorker in me, or so I thought. But nonetheless, he kept coming up every single time I investigated my questions. For instance, when I found that the NAEYC and Fred Rogers Center joint position statement on interactive media as tools in early childhood programs, I soon began to realize he was pretty special. So I talked to Paula today about the fact that I was going to speak about her and about him and how she and he are influencing my life. She mentioned to me that he had tremendous discipline. He was actually a musician and an activist, extremely exacting about his work. And he was a vocal advocate. In fact, his deepest passion, she told me, was his belief that children of migrant workers needed to be supported. They needed a sense of stability and repetitiveness and routine and didn't always have that chance, though they had perhaps warm homes, things were constantly changing for them. I had chills when she told me that because it made me think of an early childhood experience of my own that was kind of buried in my memory. When my first peacemaker hero, my mom, took my brother and sister and I to migrant workers in the area which I lived very, at a very young age near Florida. And she taught us that we could help, but also she taught us to respect and learn from them. I hadn't thought about this memory in years and or its connection to my work, but I don't think it was a coincidence that it came up today and that I remembered because my mom, Anita, taught me that to care from a very early age. Mr. Rogers told an interviewer in a CNN interview that he actually hated TV, but he decided to do something with it. For him, the space in the television set between him and that set, and the person watching is holy ground. He was a minister who saw his spiritual calling as his work with children, i.e. his sacred space was TV. He and Margaret McFarland, a leading developmental psychologist, worked very closely together. So as Reverend Paula illuminated, his show embodied a way to care and to give children, and some in particular who may not have the opportunity to have a steady home, a neighborhood with one they could watch on TV and connect with. But how will all these great and big and daring ideas live in our preschool? They may be expressed simply. We, the teachers who are sitting here today, intentionally frame and communicate intention even in the smallest things. For example, we don't say, watch out, you might fall. We say, hold on to the banister so you can be safe. We say we're all different and we're all the same and we learn how, in Mr. Rogers' words, we are all fancy. We also look at what is fair and what is not and the children get that. And we talk about friendship, what it means to be a friend. And you and I and the teachers and all the adults in the children's lives have such an important role in this. In the words of Fred Rogers, it is a wonderful feeling not only to have a good friend, but to know how to be a good friend yourself. Our adult patience and realistic expectations can be as helpful to the child as knowing when we ought to step in and mediate a dispute. Empathy and tolerance and all the other things that have to do with being a good friend, they're caught, not taught. We can offer opportunities for play with peers, offer suggestions for compromise, and intervene when necessary. But our greatest gift may be the example we set in our own friendships. It is from us, I believe, that our children are likely to learn best." End quote. I believe we are incredibly fortunate to be here in a friend's school, where testimonies such as peace, equity, and stewardship can be named where in a multidisciplinary and holistic approach, we can name our greater human capacities, including spiritual ones, and they can be practiced. We don't have all the answers, we don't always know, we don't always get it right, but we are on the quest together. I hope this evening will be a delicious one for you. The teachers have worked so hard to welcome you and make this evening a truly meaningful one.
Thank you for letting me share what is important to me, and I look forward along with the teachers to continuing to share with you what we all care about in the lives of children. Thank you.